Hi everybody, this is Reese with babycaremag.com and babyprepping.com and I am here with the wonderful Carrie Gilmartin, founder of Bamboo Bees. Um, thank you for joining me, hi. I'm super happy to be here, thanks for having me. Absolutely, and so before we get started, for all you viewers out there who don't know what or who Bamboo Bees is, I mean, you probably know because they're everywhere and they're fabulous, but here is their signature product right here. This is the Bamboo Bees nursing pads that I love, love, love. Put your love. finger in that little hole and feel how soft it is. Oh my God, there <laughs> we go. <laughs> and there is a separate video that reviews these products and others from Bamboo Bees, so make sure to check that out. The link will be below when it's ready. Um, so, so that's their signature product. But before we get into that, um, I wanted to talk to you, Carrie, just about um, about you as a mom and, Thanks. um, yeah. And you know, just how many kids you have and what do you love about being a mom? What's hard about being a mom? Just, just to introduce yourself to our readers and say, Hey, you know, we're all moms here or expectant moms for those of you watching. Yeah. I was, um, I'm pretty surprised to be saying my kids are now six, eight and 10. Wow. I've been at this, um, for almost eight years building this business. Um, I started it after I had my second. Um, to give you a tiny bit of background on me, you know, everybody's different. And, but I was not one of those planner moms that had the list and was checking things off the list and registering for all the stuff that her sister-in-law and friends told her she needed. I just was like, I'm an everything's going to be all right, mom, which of course didn't really work out that well all the time. <laughs> um, I was really surprised after I had my first baby that nobody had told me how hard breastfeeding would be. Mm -hmm. I was really shocked when we had friends coming over doing the meal train thing, bringing us food. I said, why didn't you tell me? <laughs> like, <laughs> everybody's so focused on birth. You told me mm -hmm. to take this class and that class and buy this and that for pregnancy, but nobody told me about those postpartum days, mm -hmm. not just postpartum um, emotional days. I just thought um, I was so focused on everything up to and then birth. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, there'd be dirty diapers. There'd be sleepless nights. But nobody ever said how hard breastfeeding would be. And I think like most people, I had a really, really hard time with it. Um, I had, I was not an underproducer. I was an overproducer, which is one of those things like, you always, if you have curly hair, you want straight hair. And if you want straight hair, you want curly hair, but to an extreme, obviously, um, it meant, uh, clogged ducts and mastitis and mm -hmm. overactive letdown, which I didn't even know was a thing until I had it. But I had a lot of problems when they told me that, um, I needed to make it to two weeks. I was crying in the middle of the night and just thought there's absolutely no way oh I'm going to make it to two weeks. Oh I really gosh. was in shock wow. that they would have let us go home from the hospital. I had hospital birth. And I was amazed that I was on my own with this and my mom breastfed. She came over and um, thankfully lives in the area, but she wasn't really of help. You know, it had been um, maybe 34 years since she had me. So <laughs> Uh, I just, I really was surprised how difficult it was. And that was the beginning, and I did get through the two weeks. Yay! Um, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's something to celebrate. It's yes. not a small thing. I got help from lactation consultants. Awesome. Um, I really, uh, really struggled. I didn't think I'd make it. And then things got easier, and then I was grateful, you know, Six or nine months in, I was grateful that I wasn't formula feeding and didn't have bottles to wash and that I had this bonding experience. I really enjoyed it. Um, I actually, just to fast forward a little bit, I'm not going to tell you every dirty little detail, but <laughs> wound up um, getting pregnant. And so I mentioned my kids are six, eight, and 10. So the two year spacing is one of these natural things where um, you're breastfeeding less and getting fertile again, believe it or not, and get pregnant, um, you know, sort of at the 20 month mark mm -hmm. and then have another baby around the same time. So I was lucky enough to get pregnant easily, um, again, a second time. And really every time I'd sort of forgotten, 
I didn't even buy nursing pads the second time. Oh, I didn't worry about mastitis. And then it was like, oh, yeah, this again. Yeah. Even it had been really recent. So I didn't think I'd make it to two weeks. Um, and I should have done the math earlier. But I think I wound up nursing for um, two years for my first two. And then um, I guess four plus four is eight. I wound up nursing for eight wow. years. <laughs> I can't even believe that. I've never really added wow. it up before. Oh my gosh. So, That's amazing. Well, I was struggling in the beginning. Once I got the hang of it, I had the hang of it. And so did my baby. And then I would get pregnant with the next baby. And I, I didn't even know tandem nursing was a thing. Mm -hmm. So I would sort of wean off one baby when I was um, having the next baby and say like, you can have bagels or whatever their favorite thing was, but when the new baby comes, they can't have bagels and they have to have mommy's milk. So we'd move on to the next baby. And then my youngest nursed until he was four. So wow. I know. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Okay. Can we just pause there and say how amazing that is? Because there's so many moms watching this right now. And there's so many moms I've talked to who are right there with you. Like literally like it's the first awful. few days, they're like, there's no way. I can't keep doing yeah. this. I can't. I know. Maybe two weeks, maybe a month, maybe like, you know, for me, I had a similar experience. I had an oversupply. And so my poor little one was like sucking on a fire hose and like, yeah. you know, I mean, they're just gurgling and, you know, and spitting up and, you know, and I'm yeah. like, right. And so, um, so I was just like, please, please just get me to six months, please just. And then I got to six months. I said, please get me to nine months. And here I am at. 26 months so just over two years and I'm like yay you know but I was really I mean it was hard and I was really begging for that first six months um, yeah so it also it it goes down it's not like they're nursing every two hours when they're two years old yeah or even one year old they're yes. they're introducing solids and it's a totally different relationship it's for me it was ab absolutely laziness like somebody would come into our bed at six or seven in the morning and I'd want to sleep in. So I'd nurse them and then I got two more hours of sleep. It was glorious. Like, yes, I, I'd do that any, that bargain. I mean, I would take that bargain any day of the week. So <laughs> it wasn't, it, it's, it's not the same in the beginning and you just need to not judge, I think, and not put limits on yourself and say, you're going to make your decision every month. It's your body. It's your baby, their decision and your decision. And you just roll with it and see how it goes. Yeah. There's no doubt that in the beginning, I don't, I don't know of anybody that says, oh my gosh, nursing was so great. <laughs> or maybe they're like those half a percenters that say they had an ecstatic birth. Yes. Those people yes. Yeah. <laughs> that like had an orgasm while they yes. were birthing. Those are the people that tell you that you don't believe that <laughs> nursing is fantastic from day one. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Most people will tell you once they start that they're happy they made that choice and committed to it and somehow got through it with usually with help. Um, yes. And that it became something that for them and their family really worked well. Yeah. But it is super rocky in the beginning, no matter what. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, like you said, the help and the support. And so, yeah. so let me jump over because I read something. I'm just going to look over here at my notes. I read something that Bamboobies did a survey last year of about 3,000 nursing moms, and you found that nursing moms pushed through the early breastfeeding challenges because of three main reasons, right? There's the health benefits for baby that everybody knows about, um, that most people know about, the bonding and connection with baby that moms experience, and they just, you know, we all, most of us love it so much, but also the convenience. And I just wanted to bring that up because you yeah. mentioned like, you know, getting the extra couple of hours of sleep and and like, just like the early challenges are rarely talked about, I rarely hear about the convenience aspect, which I'm always championing because I'm like, look, I started co-sleeping because I could not get myself out of bed to go walk into another room to go nerd. No. Like I just couldn't do it. But if she's right next to me, she would practically dream feed. Like, you know, she would she would cry a little bit. I'd hear it, wake up, roll over, you know, like get myself adjusted. And yeah. then she'd nurse and nurse and go right back to sleep. And I, and and so I would you. right back to sleep. Yeah. And I just yeah. thought no turning on the lights, no getting out of bed. No, I mean, it was super convenient for me and that's why it worked. So, um, so yeah, so 
so tell me about like your experience with it being convenient or what you heard from your customers and my ex my experience was I think pretty similar um even though it's been like I said several years since my littlest was little um I think that there still is a stigma against natural nurturing mm -hmm. I think we have our own instincts and we think well, why wouldn't I keep the baby in bed or keep the baby right next to my bed? And um, mothers, mother-in-laws, husbands will um, encourage you to have more of a detached philosophy or approach to things. When I think in our hearts we know attached is best, whether it's using a carrier, um, co-sleeping, any of those attachment parenting things, those are actually just parenting things. They're not attachment parenting. The things are like, mammalian, normal, instinctual, easier, more convenient, natural ways of behaving. It doesn't need a new label. It's how things, I think, should have always been. But we're all getting pressure, like husbands saying they don't want the baby in bed because what, they own the bed? No. Yeah. Mother-in-law is saying, well, you need to put the baby down. You can't always carry her. Actually, we can. We have. We have for centuries. Um, there's a lot of external pressure that tells us to ignore our instincts. Um, there's nothing good about it. I think we have to stand up for our rights, our rights to sleep and cuddle and nurse as long as we want, all of those things. We have to really listen to ourselves. That is beautiful. Thank you for sharing that. That is, yes. Sure, it's not easy, especially when you don't know what you're doing. This is your first time doing it, and a mother or mother-in-law has done it before. You're tempted to listen to them. It's hard to listen to yourself. Yes, it is, especially in those early days and weeks and months where you're just exhausted, right? Like yeah. You're exhausted. Yeah. Your baby doesn't know what to do. You don't know what to do. Everybody's new at it. Yeah, yeah. And I think that's really important. I think you really um, bring up a really good point that, like, nobody will tell you how hard the, no. what, you know, the fourth trimester, right? What the, yeah. the first baby's first three months, sort of. Um, how hard it really is. And a lot of it is just because of the learning curve and because baby's new to the world and because we don't have as much support um, as moms used to. And, you know, just a lot of different reasons, you know, a lot of moms are going back to work, you know, within that three months. Um, just a yeah. million different, there's a million different things that make it harder for us um, to listen to ourselves and, and hear what we really want to do and say, you know, and stand up for ourselves. Yeah. So I think if we heard that earlier on, you know, even before baby arrives, maybe we could prepare ourselves a little bit or at least have the conversation with our loved ones to say, you know, I want to try breastfeeding as long as possible. I want to try having baby in bed next to me. So, mm -hmm. I can, you know, I hear it gives, you know, it'll help me sleep more. I hear sleep is really important, <laughs> you know. Absolutely. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, so that's exactly... Um, exactly something that should be talked about more and so did you find so you've had three kids and you mentioned that you know the first time it was really really rough and then the second time again you just didn't even remember to buy the nursing was, pads and so yeah I was just a little like surprised did it feel like every time felt like new again like oh even yes even though they're pretty closely spaced um the second time felt new the third time I can hardly even tell you I don't even know what happened <laughs> I had three kids three and under for right. a couple of months right and it's mm -hmm. it's like a wash i think it um the good part about that is that i didn't listen to anybody else i they knew i had experience i did what i did i um i trusted myself more because awesome. i'd done it mm -hmm. um but they're always tough spots there are tough spots when you have a second or a third. I can't even imagine past that, but there are tough spots where you don't know um, how you're going to give your older kids enough time, energy, love when a second comes along. I mean, that's just the hardest part about having a second. Yeah. 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 I, I, I'm, we only have the one, and we're talking about our second one currently, and I, that's exactly my feeling. Like It rips um, your heart out. Yeah. It's yeah. awful. 
<laughs> to not be able to do everything for your first like you have. Yes, exactly. Thank you. Thank you for acknowledging yeah. that. That's exactly, it feels, the thought of it feels awful to me. Awful. Yeah. <laughs> it's, but in the beginning it is, but everybody's richer for it. You know, there's a saying, the best present you could give your child is a sibling. Mm -hmm. And I absolutely believe that. Oh, oh, okay. All right. I'm going to think about that. I'll share that with your my husband. husband. Your husband's going to thank me for that one. <laughs> <laughs> he probably will. <laughs> okay. So now, so you, at one point you had three very young kids under your roof. Yeah. So you got the three kids. Like how did Bamboo Bees come about? How, when did you decide to do it? How did it start? How did you make the time? Like, in what yeah. sense of, like there must have been craziness going on and then you decided this is so hard I need something better and I'm gonna go make it myself yeah I almost want to say it wasn't even a decision but um, we're definitely our family like most I imagine um, is a two-income family my husband makes money and helps support our family and I did too um, and I wasn't in a position to just say, oh, I'm going to start a business and I don't know if it's going to work or not. I'm going to invest money into it. So um, for uh, about four years, I worked two jobs. I was a real estate agent, which thankfully was somewhat flexible. Mm -hmm. I definitely remember bringing my babies with me to show houses and all that. But you do what you got to do. Mm -hmm. um, so I kept my day job for quite a while. And that, um, you know, created marital, marital harmony, um, checking account harmony. <laughs> yeah. Um, that helped a lot, but it what it meant that I had to really, uh, work a lot mm -hmm. to make it happen. Um, the reason I did was that it didn't really didn't feel like work. You know, it sounds corny, but, um, I just so believed in my product and in mom's needs I was so insulted that J and J or whoever these big companies were that were run by old men had never thought about me. They thought about their margins and whatever other business things, but they had never woken up in a wet bed, soaking wet bed. Yeah. <laughs> like you and I have. Yes. They did not get it. So they're creating a washable pad that's made of three layers of cotton. They don't know what wet cotton feels like on their nipple. They don't know how sore our nipples are. They don't know how much milk it feels like you wake up in when maybe you wake up in two ounces of milk. Well, that spreads over your entire bed. You wake up freezing, soaking wet. <laughs> yeah. You know, they do not get it from a gut instinct like we do. Mm -hmm. So when I married the ideas that I got from cloth diapering, which were um, waterproof fabrics, why doesn't a nursing pad have a waterproof fabric on the back? When I married the ideas of that and the super soft bamboo that doesn't um, get cold and clammy when it's wet, and I figured out a way to make a better breast pad, literally there was nothing stopping me. I knew there had to be so many other moms out there that I could help that I didn't think twice about it. I wanted to do it, and I did it. That's so awesome. Yeah. That's so amazing. It, so wasn't, how, it wasn't a question. That is amazing. And so how did you um, – so obviously you made these for yourself first, right? Like you just, you needed something for you. Yeah. So I did. And my daughter was six months old when I got started. Mm -hmm. And so I was like tapering off in the leaking, okay. you know, in the beginning yep. you'll leak a lot. And then as time goes on, your body adjusts and calibrates and makes more like the appropriate amount of milk. Thank God. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so I made these really thin pads that just absorbed a little and didn't show it through my shirt and weren't embarrassing looking. Mm -hmm. Well, my best friend had a baby around six months later, and I gave her our pads, and she came to me and said, these are just not cutting it. Like, you can't imagine how much I'm leaking. And I didn't know because I was out of that phase, and it all goes so fast. Right. So that's when we started making the overnight pad. And we were the first ones to make like a light and heavy leaking pad, even though that was normal in like menstrual land <laughs> right. for menstrual pads. Nobody was making two different nursing pads. Right. Right. And so believe it or not, that's because I was where I was with my baby when I started the company and where my best friend was six months later. We're like, oh, we need a heavy leaking pad. This but is crazy. Like Sometimes it's nuts, right? Yes. That's amazing. Like it never would have occurred to me. I just... 
I was, I mean, honestly, I was just thankful that you had them, right? Like that they were available, but it never occurred to yeah. me to like that. Yeah. Like that's so wonderful that she came back to you and was like, this isn't, I, I need something better. I, like I need some. Yeah. She was like, not cutting it. I'm leaking right through this. This is not doing it. And I was giving them to her for free, of course, because right. she's my best friend and neighbor and she had 30 of them. Well, other people aren't buying that many. They can't just swap them out, swap them out like that. So yeah, um, that's when we started making the really one for heavy leaking for those early nursing days, like, you know, the first month, six weeks before your body, like I said, gets kind of calibrated mm -hmm. to how much milk it needs to make and everything gets figured out. Yeah. Well, and then for those of us that have or had oversupplies, I mean, you end up just using those overnight ones for like months and months and months until you really, mm -hmm. you know, um, and my oversupply lasted about 10 months. So I was using the like, heavy. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It took a little while. <laughs> um, yeah. So. Things come and go too. Like you could have a normal amount of leaking, or what? What everything is normal, but a small amount of leaking. Then baby starts sleeping through the night, right. and all of a sudden you have oversupply just right. because they're not feeding all the time because they're sleeping. Yes. And then they go through a growth spurt, yes. and they need more milk. So you make you make more milk. You make the same amount of milk, but it all gets used, yes. so you yes. don't have as much leaking. And then some people with really low supply have told us they still leak and it drives them crazy because they're trying to save every ounce. Right. So there are all kinds of scenarios, but you do need a variety of solutions. Yes. So yeah. I think one of the reasons our product took off the way it did and gets the reviews it does is that it was invented by somebody going through these same problems and her best friend. Yeah. Um, yeah. Rather than, like I said, some old guy just crunching numbers. Yes. Well, and that's, yeah. I mean, honestly, that, and, and I'll talk about this in the separate interview, I mean, the separate video where I'm actually doing a review, but, um, but I came to Bamboo Bees after buying a couple of others, and that's exactly how it felt, where um, I, you know, I put on the other ones, and precisely, you put them on, and you're like, who thought this fabric was a good idea? Like, did they put this on their nipples ever? No. <laughs> you know, like not even before they're wet. They're just dry out of no. the back. You know, you wash them once, you put them on, and you're like, holy cow, do they hate me? Like, you know, like. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and at one point I even had to, you know, just out of like desperation, I was on the way to work and I forgot, you know, so I stopped at like a Rite Aid and bought a box of disposable ones. Oh my God, I put those on and of course I'm, you know, sore and, and I just thought, I literally, I was like, these are torture devices. These are, I mean, they're just like, I might as well put sandpaper in my shirt. Yeah. Um, you know, because, and again, those are disposable. So I, I respect, you know, the need for it to whatever. Um, but my point is, and again, I'm going to go through this in the other video, but I just want to point out that these, I just want to show the viewers these before... Okay, so first they come in these beautiful, these adorable, okay, so these are the heart-shaped ones, which are my favorite. The hearts are fun. The hearts are fun, and they surprisingly, they mold so perfectly to your breasts. Yeah. Like they just, you know, so they go so well under the shirts, and they're so invisible. And then here's the round one, and so it's nice. And you can see kind of how thin and flexible they are. And I don't know how well you can see this, but it's super, super soft and fuzzy. It's so soft after you wash it too. It's unbelievable. Yes. Yeah. And so when I opened this up and I felt them, I thought, yes, yes, that's exactly what should be on my body at this point in my life under these circumstances. That's exactly. And really, I mean, when would you not want it on your body, you know, for any reason? And so I thought that was exactly what I thought where I was like, okay, someone really put some thought into this. Like somebody knows what I'm going through and they made something for me, like for my experience. So, um, so thank you for that. <laughs> my pleasure. I was in your same spot. I was like, how can this be that there's not a solution? This is a human problem. Yes. It's like having your period, like it's universal. Why is there not a better solution? This is crazy. Yes. So I'm not at all surprised it took off so well. So I'm super happy and excited for your success. Um, and, um, and then we'll talk about a few more of your products, uh, in a little bit. And I know you just have a bunch yeah. of stuff coming out and there's a bunch of stuff I'm going to be reviewing that I loved. Um, so, but before we get to that, I wanted to ask you about, because you mentioned you nursed your, um, your third baby for four years, which is amazing. 
So clearly, yeah, I mean, it's very, it's very little in the end. Like I are, hardly yeah. feel like I deserve credit for that last year. It's just very occasional and just um, comfort nursing and not just for him, comfort for me too. Yes. Yeah. Well, but it's a bonding thing. Exactly. It is a bonding thing. And I, so I was going to ask you, and clearly we know how you feel about, you know, extended breastfeeding and nursing toddlers and, um, yeah. but one of my other favorite products of yours that I got to try was the, um, the, your chick shawl, the, like the nursing. Oh shawl. yeah. Yeah. And, um, and I just, I felt the same way when I put it on because I tried a couple of other ones. Um, okay, so when I went to my first lactation consultant, there was a mom nursing, and she had the she had a, something that looked like it had like a wire that came around like this that yeah. like held its shape right, so she could look down at baby. And then what hung from it was an, a really interesting type of. I mean, it was almost like a picnic table type of fabric where again it held its shape it wasn't like a soft flowy fabric because again I guess they wanted to make sure baby was getting air and um but it was just the strangest I mean it was like she yeah. like put on this mini tent um it was just yeah. the strangest apparatus I'd ever seen and then and then I saw you know I've seen the like the infinity scarves that are supposed to double as the nursing cover um, and I tried one of those and it was so awkward and I just like, I got tangled up in it and baby was getting tangled up in it and it was a very weird experience. Um, and then, uh, and then I just started using, um, so I mentioned to you, I was previously a, a hula dancer, a professional hula dancer. So I have all yeah. these, these sarongs, right? Like I have a collection of sarongs and pareos and that's right. Yeah. And, um, so, uh, my baby was born in LA, you know, it's really hot in Los Angeles. And so I would literally just like have like a really flexible tank top on and then like throw my sarong over my shoulders. And so whenever she needed to nurse, I would just kind of, you know, fling it over her in public. Perfect. Um, yeah. And so when I got your shawl, I was like, yes, this, this, this is it. This is exactly like super flexible, breathable fabric. Just like yeah. right over, you know, and then, but you can wear it when they're not nursing and it looks totally normal. Um, and so, so I just wanted to ask like, so first of all, how did you come up with that? But also second, do you have any? <laughs> it's a bit of a crazy story. Oh my gosh. Okay, so after that story, if you have any tips for you know new moms who are like super nervous about breastfeeding in public, and and for some moms, I'll say you know, like for some moms, it's really hard, and it's okay if you don't. But if you want to, like if you happen to have any tips or ideas that you've heard. Um, as you were making the shawl, as you were testing it or anything like that, you know, since you've probably talked to a lot of newer expectant moms. Um, yeah. You know, everybody's different. Like you say, we all have different tolerances, but I think the one thing that um, is common among all of us is that we have different tolerances for different situations. Right. Like in a certain situation at a certain table at a certain restaurant in a certain town, right. you feel fine you know, especially with a six month old or older where the baby knows how to latch on like this and everything's good and you don't need to watch, you don't need to help, you don't need to pinch your nipple to get it in there right, <laughs> you need to help at all. That's one situation, right? Mm -hmm. And on the other end is you've got a six week old and you and baby are both still learning how this works. Yeah. And maybe the lactation consultant told you you need to pinch your nipple a certain way and you need to have the baby a certain angle. And yeah. you're like full of all these instructions in your mind, but you're not able to just naturally do it. Yeah. And so you're really working at it. That's when actually the nursing cover that you talked about, that's, I call it an apron style. Like it has something that goes around your neck, has this hoop. You can see what's going on. That's actually helpful for then. Awesome. Because you're really struggling with the latch, um, usually like very early days and for a short period of time. That's helpful. Um, I never had one of those. Um, I didn't like the patterns. I didn't like them. the patterns drawing attention to me. Like if I'm going to be nursing in public, I don't want everyone turning around when I whip out this brightly colored um, thing yeah. and looking at me. Whether they're giving me thumbs up or scowling at me, I don't want them looking at me. Mm -hmm. So I'm embarrassed to say, but like also maybe sort of proud that I listened to myself. The baby needed to get fed. I went in the bathroom. Yeah. Not very often, but I remember sitting on the toilet nursing because 
it was the most comfortable way I could get it done. Yes. And baby wouldn't be distracted. I wouldn't be nervous. We would just take care of business. Yes. And it's a touchy subject, as you know. I am grateful that you brought it up. Um, but that's why I say it's so situation dependent. Yeah. Sometimes that may be the best thing for you and baby to do is yeah. to just go to the bathroom, get it done, have everybody be happy. Your baby can look at you, look up at you and yeah. look you in the eye yes. and sort of smile while they're nursing and yeah. you get that moment and you also get that moment of privacy, like absolute privacy in a bathroom stall. So I might get vilified on Facebook after this or something, <laughs> but I don't really care. <laughs> You do what, like I said in the beginning, you trust your instincts, you do what you got to do. Yes, I completely Other times, agree. I'd feel comfortable, but I remember, um, I don't know, I think maybe it was like six months out with my first, and we were in an airport restaurant. You know how sometimes in airport, um, like in the airport by the gates, they'll have a restaurant with like a courtyard? <laughs> Anyway, we were out in very much in public. Yes, there are like yeah. tons of people walking by and we're in a restaurant and I'm think I thought I could nurse, but I we were just having problems. Like that just happens sometimes and there was some fussiness probably on both of our parts. <laughs> right. I mean the baby was fussy and I was fussy and I'm sitting across from my husband and he's a little bit nervous and anxious that somebody's going to see something and I'm like I don't care what anybody sees I have to satisfy you know that feeling mm -hmm. you have to fix the problem your baby is hungry you have to feed them yes like it does nothing else matters yes um and I was trying to make it happen between my nursing tank and another sweater or something and the waiter kept coming over with water and taking our order and I was just like oh and I my husband was upset and I was like, I cannot please everybody. I can't please you. I can't please the waiter. I can't please the baby at the same time. It's impossible. Yeah. Um, so I really did struggle with it in the beginning. Um, but it's very situation dependent. I think probably would have been best, like I said, in that situation to just say, forget it. I'm going to go find a quiet corner in a concourse where nobody's gate is getting called to board and find a quieter spot. Um, but it just is what it is. And you live, yeah, I think you kind of live and learn. Yeah. Um, but the genesis of the product came because, um, this is a little, it sounds a little bit crazy, but, um, if you have one of these, you might be able to understand. I was actually, um, out on our deck. We lived in the mountains in here in Colorado where we live and it was getting cold at night and I was folding laundry and I had a skirt mm -hmm. that, was a big kind of loose fitting skirt that I wore a lot of times when I was pregnant and postpartum because it didn't have a tight waistline. And I put it over my neck thinking that it could keep me warm. And then I kind of pulled it down and I was like, this kind of looks like a shawl. <laughs> awesome. I know. So in the early days, we actually marketed it as that, like as a maternity skirt or shawl and we and marketed it whatever. And then we hung it on it. But, um, the product, believe it or not, it was a little bit shorter and narrower. It was a little bit smaller, but it was um, fashioned after a skirt of mine. That's amazing. <laughs> I, I, I know. Yeah, and shawls weren't in then. Like now you can buy a shawl at a regular women's clothing store. Mm -hmm. That was um, maybe eight years ago. Mm -hmm. They weren't a thing. So luckily, like the trends have caught up with the idea and. Um, you know, being all black, it's just so forgiving. Yes. Even if you never nurse in public and you just wear it postpartum, it's super forgiving. It, it does not is. clean your belly. It's just a really flattering, like, piece of apparel. Yes. So I think people like it no matter what. But it is really nice that um, it works as a nursing cover, too. People are using it as a car seat cover. They're using it as an impromptu swaddle or a cover for the changing table. Like yeah, yeah. If you're mm -hmm. public changing table, they'll throw it down. It's like multi-purpose, just piece of fabric. So that is fantastic. That is yeah, it's really And I like I want to, you know, I just I want to confess also so that all the viewers hear this that you know in the beginning, um, I I mean I did a lot of nursing in the car, you know, because I just yeah. right because we were we were just trying to figure out latch till and and. 
And my first better three than days, the bathroom. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. I, yeah. I think I don't think I've ever I've never nursed in a, a public restroom. But um, but I mean, you know, the car isn't super comfortable, really. Um, and but most more importantly is that when I when I started nursing, so my baby was born uh, eight and a half pounds. And so she was not like a little tiny, tiny baby, right? Like she, <laughs> you know, and she was, like, yeah. And she was, um, and she was like, uh, you know, by a couple of weeks, a month out, she was in like the 90th percentile for her weight. Cause she kept drinking up all that milk I was making. Yeah. And so, um, so when I saw lactation consultants, one of them recommended, you know, a nursing pillow and, you know, like, and I, we found something that worked and it was literally like, I couldn't feel comfortable nursing her without doing everything that worked. So I had to have my pillow. Mm. I had to have her just in the right position for a pretty solid like month until I got started yeah, feeling but... more comfortable. You know what I mean? And so it was like, so if we went out, I brought the freaking pillow with us. Like it was in the car. <laughs> and that's why I kept going back to the car was, I was like, oh, she's hungry. You know, I'm just going to go, you know, hubby can keep shopping or do whatever we were doing. Um, but we were always kind of close to the car and a little tied to, you know, that pillow. But like, it was what I needed. That's um, all right. Right. Yeah. And I think I think, um, you know, reminding moms that, yeah, like it is situational. And, and the point is to feed and bond with your baby like that's, that's. Yeah. And nothing else matters but being flexible and making sure that you and baby are happy. Exactly. Nobody else matters. Exactly. Not the strangers in the restaurant, not your husband, not your mother in law. Yeah. 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 It's so hard. Yeah, it is. So, um, so yeah, so I, you know, so just to all the moms out there, you know, you might find yourself huddling in some dark corner somewhere to make it work. That's fantastic because you're making it work and it's working for you. So, you know, you just, yeah. you do what you got to do. Um, okay. So, uh, I think we're going to wrap up here, but I did want to ask you one last right. question, um, about, so you're, you know, you go to like trade shows and you hear feedback from your customers. Um, mm -hmm. And I'm just wondering if you have any thoughts about helping um, to support new moms or help normalize breastfeeding a little more. You know, you know, you talked about in the beginning. I mean, I'm sure you have a lot of opinions about this and we could probably talk for hours, but <laughs> um but I, but you know, again, and maybe the answer is we just talk about this stuff more so that new moms do hear that, you know, or expectant moms do hear, you know, breastfeeding in the beginning will probably be really hard, but it'll get easier. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So we actually have started a campaign just, um, maybe four or six weeks ago, um, with the hashtag breastfeeding challenge. Mm hmm. And it is a hybrid. So um, there's normalized breastfeeding, which is one thing. Like breastfeeding is normal. We need to do it. Some of that has to do with nursing in public. What we did is we sort of we wanted to take this discussion topic, which we've had, which is it's okay to say that birth is going to be hard. It's also okay to say that um, breastfeeding is going to be hard, that your first trimester postpartum if you want to call it that, or fourth trimester, it's going to be hard. It's not just diapers and sleep. It's also figuring out how to live together and support each other, not just breastfeeding, but everything. So we started, you know, the um, ice bucket challenge. Yes. We sort of took that idea and we wanted to morph it to say, we challenge our friends to talk about how breastfeeding was a challenge. And so we want people to post pictures of them breastfeeding, whether it's early or late, you know, four years or one month, and talk about the challenges so that their friends know about it because we're not talking about it enough. Yeah. And that's why moms are surprised and that's why they give up. Yeah. And that's why they have a hard time with it because nobody told them it was going to be hard. People told you birth was going to be really hard, right? <laughs> right. And so you were prepared. You were like, channeling your inner strength and you were getting ready for it and you were taking classes and you were muscling up for it right and then that's over you're kind of like whew I did it yes no <laughs> like yeah you did but there's you know there's like you finished one marathon now it's time for another yeah and so preparing people mentally emotionally and factually for the challenges of breastfeeding is really important 
So we have a tagline that's, we've got your front. Like you need support. We've got your yes. back. We've got your front. Yes. This hashtag of breastfeeding challenge is for moms to talk about it. So they're all their friends know um, and support each other. There's overproduction. There's underproduction. There's mastitis. There's nipple trauma. They're like, <laughs> nobody knows that before they have a baby. And I don't know if the establishment or doctors or what is trying to hide it, but it's not helping. Yeah. So just yeah. talking about it, whether it's socially in the real world or socially online, I think is really helpful. So we'd love it if your readers use that um, hashtag breastfeeding challenge post about their particular issue and how they got over it or how they didn't get over it. That's all helpful. Oh my gosh. That's it. I'm going to use it. I'm going to post some pictures. Awesome. Yes, absolutely. Um, that's so cool. I think, I think that's fantastic. And we're definitely, we're going to, we're going to, I'm going to do some hashtagging. I'm going to be some promoting Good. some hashtag. So <laughs> awesome. Well, I think, um, that's it for me. Thank you so much Great. again. Um, and thanks for, for having me. Yes, absolutely. And for all you viewers out there, again, there's a separate video that covers a whole bunch of their products. Um, yeah. uh, tell us your website because well, it's by bamboobies.com. B U I B A M B O O B I A S. Perfect. And um, I'm sure the link is below too, but just in case. Yeah. And, um, and yeah, so I'll have a bunch of product reviews for you that are super fun and very cool. And, um, and yeah, I, you know, I look forward to all the new stuff you create and, um, congratulations on all your success. Thank you. You too. I really appreciate the conversation. Thanks.